this is the CCTV security system for a scam call center located in Kolkata and today I will be showing these cameras to the exact banking scammers that work from this building. When I first got access to this pretty massive call center, I was very excited to find out that they had CCTV security cameras set up. I was very intrigued to find out what the call center looked like, especially after listening to the amount of noise coming from this office space. Yes. Your internet connection has been compromised. These cameras have a program set up that allows the scam agents to chat with each other on their local network. And looking at the amount of people online, there's about 14 agents employed here to actively scam American and Canadian citizens. The way that they scam people starts with one of these typical virus pop-up messages, but ends up being a way more brutal scam than all of the other Microsoft variants. The checking account that you have should be used for this transfer and the amount is $59,000. Thousand dollars in form of cash, okay? That we're going to make the wire transfer for 107,000. It wasn't until fairly recent that I found out about this newly evolved Microsoft pop up scam variant, but out of the last 10 call centers that I got access to, seven of them are now running the same exact scam. Every once in a while, some scam bosses come up with a new fraud format, find out that it works very effectively on their victims, and they then start sharing these methods with other call centers. Here, for example, in an email from an insider I received, we can read that a call center in Delhi was getting a visit from two guys out of a Kolkata call center who were going to show the boss of the Delhi center some new methods to steal money from people. There's also a lot of Telegram, WhatsApp and Facebook groups of scammers sharing these same methods with each other and also sharing other scam components like victim information, blasting campaigns, phone systems and announcements. Once everything is collected and set up, the call center is ready to start scamming people and will pump out advertisements that will lead their victim to a fake virus pop-up message claiming that their computer has been compromised by hackers. Uh, by any chances, ma'am, uh, did you uh, click on any advertisements while you were downloading the game? No, I just went to the website that it had. I clicked on it two or three times. Whenever you click on any suspicious links, like when your Windows Security Defender, it detects any kind of fraudulent activities, any kind of Trojan, spyware, malicious files, that time it completely blocks you from using your computer so that these Trojans would not affect your details, any personal information. So that's why it completely blocked you and gives you the global helpline number on which we are connected right now. This scam starts as a typical Microsoft pop-up scam in which victims will lose about $100 to $1,000 to a fake network protection package. Just like in that same scam, these scammers start off the call by acknowledging the information on the pop-up about foreign hackers in the victim's network. And they will then also use the same programs and commands to show that there really is something wrong with the device. How much is it? <laughs> Uh, 1,595. Oh, 1,500? It simply means that anybody could download any application into your device. Yeah. So for an address, it simply means something which yeah. is not from your place. It's a malware program that targets financial institution mm -hmm. websites. So okay. what needs to be done here, ma'am? Uh, we need to generate a security report. I need to assign level 2 technicians who would be starting the work to secure your network. So far, nothing is really different from the typical scam. But as soon as the fake virus page comes to an end, things start to get a little more serious than just a $200 protection package. Thank you for staying online with me, Lee. Are you there? Okay, I pulled the details up. So the first thing, uh, the reason behind the lock on your computer. So these hackers were trying to upload child free from your network. And I believe that you understand uploading child is totally illegal and crime in United States. We immediately blocked your device. The second part where they go different from the typical scam is that these guys not only pretend to be from Apple or Microsoft, they will now completely switch from their tech support to a banking scam. I wouldn't be ever able to secure your financial information because you understand I have no hold on your financial information, right? We have no other choice to involve your bank in this. Yes, help me with their 800 number. Your lines are not secure, so I wouldn't suggest you to call them directly with without any securities and I do not want these hackers to listen to your financial information with your bank. So I will secure a line for this 800 number so that you can have a safe conversation with your bank, okay? The scammer will make the victim locate their bank's phone number, but they don't actually let them talk to their bank. The only thing that they do is play the bank's call menu through their headsets and then continue the scam by handing the call over to a scam colleague. For assistance with an existing account, please press 1. Thank you for contacting Ameritrade. How can I help you today? Um, got notified that I had some hackers 
and I contacted uh, uh, Apple, and then they transferred me over to Microsoft. This banking person will tell the victim the same thing that Microsoft has told them, which is that this is a case of identity theft and they need to secure every single penny in the victim's bank account. With the current value, yeah. with the current value of $50,181.25, there are four liquidation attempts that have been made onto your IRA. So according to you, these four transactions, they have been made without your knowledge? That's correct. Did they say anything about your identity? Yes, yes, they did. Oh my god, they can steal all of your funds in a single click and you will never get to know about it. We need to start the liquidation of all of your funds. Here comes in the encryption method as suggested by the Federal Reserve officers. We create a secure account for you on one of digital platforms uh, like crypto platform, digital currencies platform. Once the victim is convinced that there is something wrong with their device and that they are now on the phone with their bank, it is time for the scammers to steal all of their money. The first option we just heard is that they set the victim up with a crypto exchange like Coinbase and make them wire their entire bank balance to that account for the scammers to then send all of the bitcoins to themselves. Of course, whenever I see a scam like this happening, I always do my best to try and prevent the victim's life from being ruined by these scammers. Who is this? Yes, hello, is this uh, Zelda? Who's calling? Yeah, my, my name is uh, James Boiler. I'm a scam investigator. I make documentaries about scam call centers. I just wanted to warn you, the guys you are talking to that are claiming to be from your um, bank, your Ameritrade, they're scammers from India, okay? They're trying to steal your money from you. Right, okay. So I know those guys are really good at talking. They're really good at convincing people. So I know you probably think that I'm I'm a hacker, I'm a scammer. So that's why I want you to call the actual number for Ameritrade and confirm that there's nothing wrong with your account and everything they just said. Literally everything is bogus, everything. Wow. This method of stealing people's money is probably the most nasty one out there right now. And it seems that it's the most successful one as well, since all the scammers are now adapting it. We have already seen these screenshots of roughly $1.8 million stolen from victims. And all these screenshots were taken from just one scammer's hard drive. The second method they use to steal money is a little bit less destructive. They will still send their victims to the bank, but this time to take out as much cash as possible and make them dump it into crypto ATM machines. Yes. So you can do that, go into the bank and ask for the amount of and that is of $4,000 in form of cash, okay? Because the cryptocurrency investments only accept the physical hard cash. Luckily with this scam, there's a lot that I can do to prevent the theft from happening. We have already seen me calling the victim before they even go out to the bank, but sometimes I'm unable to reach them in time, which forces me to save them directly through their bank. They said that there was 4,000 coming out of my account and you didn't give them any account information, right? No. She said they sent her to the fraud apartment at First People, and this is Adam Carr, and that name is not even in our list. Nobody, no other company can just connect to our fraud department. Not Microsoft you, Security couldn't? No. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're going to take care of you. Don't, don't, just don't answer that phone anymore. Now, who are these guys that are some of the agents behind this new million dollar scam? So far, we only know that they have a few security cameras set up and that the only thing they do as an occupation is lie to people. Very rarely did I catch them actually telling the truth. What is my IP address not VPN? Okay. So here we can see whether your IP is protected or not. Oh, can you see at the top? It says your IP. It says unprotected. This part of the scammers their virus pitch is the only part that is actually true. The victim did indeed not have a VPN turned on and the webpage that they used to check the IP protection status, NordVPN, is also the sponsor of today's video. If you, like the computer we have just now seen on screen, do not yet have a premium VPN running, I would highly recommend checking out Nord to enforce your online security. When my host computer and virtual machine start up, NordVPN automatically starts running in the background with a kill switch so that I never have to worry about my IP address getting exposed post or any of my data being leaked. As I've already shown before, once somebody gets your IP address, like I did here with the scammer, they can exploit vulnerabilities in your network to get into your devices, find out where you are staying, or simply take away your internet access completely. With NordVPN's next generation encryption, this can all be prevented by the simple click of just one button and up to six devices for less than $3 a month. This is only if you use my link, nordvpn.com scambater, which will get you a huge 62% discount 
on a two year plan with one month free of secure browsing. Again, please make sure you guys protect your online identity with North at nordvpn.com slash scambaiter. Anyways, moving back to the cameras, we can see that there's a total of eight views and three of them are taped. From camera five and eight, we can see that this call center is located somewhere in a dark back alley and camera six and seven reveal to us that this call center is probably not situated in a very fancy office space. Normally when we get to see CCTV security cameras in scam call centers, it is a very well organized building, but in reality, most scam call centers, like this insider confirmed to me, are in fact situated in some unorganized dark back alley apartment. The first thing I wanted to find out about these scammers was where exactly their office space was situated, but since there were no laptops and I could not do any research on the surroundings, I pretty much had no chance of finding that piece of information. Thankfully I did not give up and remembered from past experience that Indian IP addresses starting with 4 or 5 are most likely owned by the internet service provider of Allianz Broadband through which I can easily find the billing address of where the Wi-Fi is supposed to go. I brute forced my way through the scammer's their network and ended up finding the Allianz Broadband user information portal which shows me that this call center is located at 72A Kopal Chandra Lane, Kolkata, India. When we zoom into this Kopal Chandra Lane on Google Maps, it does indeed match with the back alley view on camera 8. This is the building that the call center is inside of, showing us the same rooftop that is visible on camera 6. So cameras 5 and 8 show us the street, camera 6 shows us the rooftop of the building, camera 4 shows us the stairs to the rooftop entrance, and camera 7 is pointed at the ground level stairs. So what about cameras 1, 2 and 3? Well, these cameras seem to have a plastic bag covering them, which makes me assume that those cameras are actually inside of the call center office. The scammers at some point probably got scared after watching other call centers being spied on and getting arrested on their own seats. TV cameras, so it decided to mask the view of the devices inside. Since there was no view in the actual office, I could not get the footage that I usually get of these guys running their scam, but I did manage to gather a bunch of information through the other camera views. I for example know that these guys start their shift at around 9pm Indian time, they come in through the front door on the east side of the Gopal Chandra lane, come up the stairs on camera 7, show up at the rooftop entrance on camera 4, and go into their call center located on the southeast side of the rooftop. Just to make sure that this wasn't indeed our scam call center, I turned on one of the scammers their microphones and waited for somebody to enter the room. <laughs> After starting their shift at around 9 p.m., they work for eight hours and leave at about five in the morning. The only time when I really see these scammers is when they come in and go out, but also when they are taking a break from defrauding people. What do they do on these breaks? Well, I have seen them smoking cigarettes, scrolling on their phones, drinking, I guess, play fighting with their scam colleagues, and filming TikTok videos. During them coming in for their shift, going out for their break, and leaving their shift, I managed to capture most of the faces of the scammers that work in this call center. Since they work during the night, the pictures and videos of them are all in black and white due to the camera's night vision being turned on, but with some AI magic, I managed to give a little bit more life to these scammers. Now I think it is time to take the life out of these scammers by showing them their own faces and security cameras. I prepared my virtual machine to have a folder called India Holiday, and once a scammer opens this folder, they will find a file that will lead them down directly to their own CCTV cameras. I also have a second folder in which I've stored all of the scammers their faces. So let's call them up and see how they react to this. So you need to just help me out which laptop is it? Is it a Windows laptop or Mac laptop? Yeah, it's Windows. Your call has been transferred to me. This is Steve Rogers. I'm the senior supervisor of AO. How are you doing today? It should be www.anydex.com. One, two, three, four, five. And then you need to click on confirm password, okay? Okay, right now don't touch your computer screen because you're going to receive the security warning on the screen because we are just going to secure your connection from those hackers. So once you receive any security warning, just let me know, don't do anything right now. Any option like that? PayPal cancellation department. Okay. And you have a small check mark boxes over there, like the gray box. Hold on, can you sir. See that? Sir, can the I can I uh, can I show you a video? Cause I have like a video. Can I show you a video? Which video? Like I went on holiday and I just wanted to show somebody my video on my computer. I just put it on Which my computer. Which video are you talking about? Can I show it to you? Okay, show me. Right, I went on holiday and I just want to show somebody this video. I don't know why. I just feel like sharing it with somebody. You know. Okay. I, Okay, show me the video. Alright, hold on.
It's really slow, my computer is very okay. old. But I just have to show somebody this video. Okay, Give me show one. me the video. Are you still there with me? Okay, take your time. Yes, I'm with you. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, yeah, this, sir, this is the video, okay? Look. This is the video, man. Wait, hold on. Okay. Look, this is the video. Do you recognize this place? You recognize this building? This one right here? The rooftop? This call center on the right in this door? You recognize this place? Sir, you can talk. Unmute your microphone. You recognize mm -hmm. this place? Oh, of course, he hangs up. <laughs> Wait, let me listen to his mic quick. Oh, he's shutting down. No. No. He shut down instantly, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, what happened to your um, cameras? I wanted to show you guys your own faces. Why did you hang up and shut down your computer? Can I talk to you? Why, why are you guys hanging up? <laughs> yeah, they shut down all the computers. They shut down everything. <laughs> they just unplugged the DVR, unplugged the electricity, unplugged the computers, shut down their phone system. <laughs> they just don't want to talk at all. And now they're going to go back home. They're going to go somewhere else to find a new call center because this one is compromised. They're going to have to find a new call center. <laughs> Unfortunately, these scammers did not want to talk to me and shut down every single part of their operation as if they had practiced it as a fire drill. Since the confrontation, their router has never been turned back on and they have not taken any scam calls either. I hope that these guys will remain absent from scamming people and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before clicking off. There's a Patreon and PayPal link in the description for if you want to buy me a coffee. I hope you guys have a nice day. Stay safe, stay cautious. Bye bye.